At some point, you've likely heard about Java generics. Generics were introduced in the Java language in Java 5. In the next few videos, we're going to take a deep dive into what generics are, how to use them, and ultimately how to create our own Java generics. The idea is this. We have a class we want to use for multiple types. We might have a list that stores numbers, a list that stores strings, a list that stores sprites, or any other specific class. We want to write this list once and use it for all object types. Let's start with a hypothetical video game. In the game, we'll have a list of sprites we want to draw to our screen. Our code updates the positions of the sprites in each game loop. We draw the sprites and repeat. So far, if we wanted a list of instances, we needed to use an array. We define our sprite and add it to our array by location. This gets a bit tricky because we need to know the number of sprites in advance when we declare our array or limit it to a set upper bound number and keep track of the number in the array. There's no clear way to add or remove sprites either. For example, if we deleted a sprite from the middle of our array, we'd have to constantly shift the array to delete sprites, or we could add a flag stating the sprite was active. This is all doable, but it's not clean. We could create a linked list class to manage our sprites and create methods for adding and removing sprites. This would solve some of the problems, but not all. What happens when we have another list with similar requirements, but it's a list of something else? Like an inventory list for our character. Completely different objects in the list, but we still need an add and a remove methods. So, we could create another class with almost exactly the same code, but this time it uses inventory objects instead of sprites. That sucks. When we repeat code, that's a sign that we're doing something wrong. Another option might be to make the class hold only instances of objects. Then we can reuse the class for anything. The problem with that is we now have to cast our objects back to the class we want in order to use it. That's too much casting back and forth and makes for ugly code. What happens if we accidentally add an inventory object to our sprite list? Code goes boom and we won't know it until we run the program. And we won't know where the incorrect add happens. We'll add the object successfully and then we'll crash way later when we try to use the wrong object. The problem here is we don't have type safety. We can't guarantee the types entering our list or coming back out. We are casting and praying, and that's not good. This was the solution before Java 5. Luckily, Java provides a large group of collection classes that solve all of our problems. We won't go into those classes in depth until another tutorial, but right now we'll stick with the array list class. The array list class is a collection class that holds a dynamic array of some objects. What object do you ask? Well, we need to learn a little bit about generics before we can go into detail about the collection classes. So what is a generic? A generic is a class that acts like a template for creating classes. In this case, we define how the list works without stating what the classes the list holds. We'll have add and remove methods, but we won't say what class we're adding and removing until we define the instance. Once we instantiate our class, we'll tell it the type our list works with. No other type is allowed. Using a generic class gives us type safety. What appears to happen behind the scenes is Java will take our template and fill in the classes we want and instantiate the class using the type we pass to it. That's why you'll sometimes hear generics referred to as templates. I do want to be clear, however, Java is not using templates like C++. In reality, Java is just performing type checking for you. The code we saw before Java 5 looked like this. We had an array list, which we could add any class instance. We add calling the add method, and we get things back out. We add, we get an instance typed as object. To use the class, we'd cast it back to the class we need. In this object list, we can pull out items, but we don't know what kind of item. Cast objects inside our list to the wrong type, or put the incorrect instance type, and things go boom at runtime. We need to tell Java what our array list holds so we can perform checks at compile time. We define our array list like this. Notice we're specifying the type our array list holds inside the angle brackets. This means when we go to add sprites to the list using the add method, the add method will only accept sprites. The right hand side of the statement instantiates our array list, so we need the parentheses like we would for any class instantiation. This is how now an array list that works with sprites. 
if we tried to add a string instance to the list, it wouldn't compile. Now you might have noticed, we're telling Java this array list holds sprites in the type declaration, and then we're telling Java again our array list holds sprites in the class instantiation. That's annoying and not necessary. Java can figure it out. We can rewrite our instantiation like this. The angle brackets are referred to as the diamond, and Java figures out the class type through type inference. That's just a fancy way of saying Java can figure out the type from the left-hand side. You're probably thinking, hey, do we need this diamond at all? Java can tell from the left-hand side we're using a generic. What happens when we do this? We'll get a warning saying the Java file uses unchecked or unsafe operations. Not a helpful warning message. What's happening here is Java used to have a class called ArrayList before they introduced generics in Java 5. To make things backward compatible, they introduced something called raw types. A raw type is a class as if the generics were never introduced. Since the ArrayList predates generics, the raw type is the class pre-Java 5. In the case of our ArrayList, we could do something like this. We could add a string to our sprite list. The class would behave as if we could store any object in the array list. Not good. We're back to where we were before. Now, if we add the type and the diamond, things work as you'd expect. Adding a string makes things break. This happens at runtime and that's good. We want type checking when we compile. Because of this, you never want to use raw types. There's no reason to. It's there for backwards compatibility to old versions of Java. However, we do want to make sure that we use the diamond so that Java knows that we're working with the parameterized type, not the raw type. Next, you're likely wondering, what's the difference between a raw type and the parameterized type? What I mean is, what is the difference between the raw type and passing object as a, our class list like this? Well, the raw list doesn't have the generic compile time checking, while the object list explicitly says we accept any object that derives from the object class. That might seem like a slight difference, but let's look at it another way. If we add another list like this, and then we have a method in another class for drawing our sprites that accepts a list called draw, if we define draw like this, the draw method will accept any of the lists we've created here. It will treat any list we pass as a raw type, which is a list of objects. However, if we define it like this, the draw method will only compile with the object list and the raw list. It won't compile if we pass the sprite list to the draw method. And for completeness, if we create a draw method that expects only a sprite list like this, the method will only work with the raw list and the sprite list. The lesson here is an object list is a different type from the sprite list, even though sprites are child classes from objects. Inheritance is not supported in generic type parameters. Here's a weird bit. If we print out the class type for each list like this, it will print out this. Everything is an array list. We can even test the instances to see if the class types are equal, which I'll print out as true. That means you can do weird things like this. We can create a sprite list, cast it as a raw list, add a string, and things won't blow up until we run it. However, if we try to cast the sprite list to an array list that holds objects, it won't even compile. So what's happening here? I kind of alluded to this when I called generics templates, but in Java, they're not really templates. There's two ways you can do generics. First way is the compiler creates a new version of the class for every type we wish to create. This is code specialization and a true template. The compiler would be creating a specialization of every class we wish to create. Our code would generate and compile code for our sprite, list array, or sprite array list and generate more code for our object list and even more code for any other array list type that we want to create. This can lead to really large program sizes. The other way is through code sharing. Basically, the compiler creates one version of our array list. In order to do this, Java uses raw types and then handles all the casting for us. It's much smaller code since there's only one array list class is compiled, but it can make things interesting. Let's see what that means. 
Let's start with the code that we're using for sprites. This is what Java replaces it with behind the scenes. That's why when we compared the class types of the different instances, they all came out the same. Notice the array list is converted to the raw type, and the cast is added when we get the sprite out of the list. The compiler is only compiling one array list class. It's using the one with objects. That's also why we can't use primitives. We need something that derives from objects for an array list. We need a Java class. At compile time, the casts are added where they are requested, but there are no new array list types created by the compiler. The same array list code is shared for all types passed to the array list. Java is adding the cast for you behind the scenes. This cast can be added at compile time because Java knows what's going in and out of the list at compile time. Runtime's a different story. That's why when we look at the class type of the instances, we get array list for all of the instances. The type contained by the array list is erased and requires reflection tricks to get the type back out. We'll look into type erasure more in the coming tutorials. So that's how generics work in Java. We looked at what generics were, how to instantiate them, what are right types, and finally, how Java treats generics behind the scenes. The important takeaways are Java generics allow us to reuse classes with different types without sacrificing type safety. And behind the scenes, there's still only one class representing our generic class. In the next video, we'll look at creating our own generic types. If you have any questions, add them in the comments below. And if you got this far, hopefully you liked the video. If so, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And with that, I'll see you in the next tutorial.